I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area as a teenager and remember in vivid detail the three options for driving to Los Angeles. The 1, the 5, and the 101. I especially remember the way that they each represent that inverse relationship between speed and beauty. With easily 10 hours of driving time and breathtaking views of the Pacific Ocean over low scrub cliffs, the one is pure luxury. Whereas with Central Valley heat, factory farm chemistry, and the repeating swish of furrowed fields whipping by, the five makes LA a simple, yet soul-sucking, six-hour bomb. Straight down. But clipping in around seven hours, right in both the geographic and temporal middle, is the 101. It pops drivers in and out of forests, flats, and coastline, before skyrocketing up and then down the Sepulveda Pass as it transforms into the behemoth river of cars that Angelinos love to hate, the 405. The busiest, smoggiest, most impersonal road in the country, the 405 has very few defenders, and at peak times, an average speed of 5 miles per hour. But for Carol and her daughter, traffic on the 405 goes beyond a jam, becoming instead an ever-churning reminder of the simplest danger in American life, unpredictable in its arrival but common in its occurrence, car crashes. When Carol received the call from her daughter about the crash that took her longtime beau, the only response was an immediate flight. That relatively safe yet far more relatively feared mode of travel, from Chicago to Los Angeles. After the fact, Carol would write a short poem, Being There, or What a Mother Can and Cannot Do, an apt description of the days that followed with her daughter. Days that contained a mixture of mundanity and monument that mirrors much of our normal lives, but with higher stakes and lower spirits. Windows wanting Windex and curtains needing L.A. soot streaks laundered out stand in direct contrast with mortuary conversations about far more precious arrangements of decoration. Becoming a daily exercise partner and dog walker with a pause in between to transform a shirt that had been for him into a scarf that will be for her. She cooks rich foods to fill the house with aroma and flavor, igniting the primal, soulful necessity of appetite, then organizes the spices as she slots them back into the rack. Combining these skills of proper placement and potency, she creates a shelf of his small items. Dropping quarters into a self-serve car wash to remove the carbon residue of an L.A. drive, before taking another as grief's designated driver on the inescapably central I-405. Punctuating each stanza is the simple admission, but I cannot bring him back. Human connection in a moment like this is to lay the path, not to take the steps. In her own words, she listened during calls with highway patrol, insurance, and coroner, was present during meetings with probate attorney, hugged without words, served as mother in situ for anguished friends, observed in awe her daughter's gracious and poised eulogy. That last one, the awe-filled observation, encapsulates the theme. Each of these is an act of presence, of recognition, that in spite of the many things that one cannot do in moments like this, the ability to be present is itself an act of immense care. In the note she sent with her submission, Carol talked about limitations, a sense of helplessness in addressing the situation. For us in theater, limitation is the key to creativity. It serves a parallel function in the processing of grief. So much of Carol's poem focused on her actions being limited to the arrangement and comfort of the space around her daughter. At the core of human wellness is the need for a hospitable environment. And to provide that requires physical presence, physical connection. Standing in a room to experience the curtains that need to be laundered, the windows washed, the spices organized. It's the juxtaposition between that intimacy and the anonymity of the 405 that stood out to me when I read the piece. An entirely impersonal force created this wound. Only an equally personal one could support its closure. Before I leave you today, I want to circle back to a concept that we started with, the inverse relationship between speed and beauty. As I was working on Carol's poem and the stories and images inside of it, I kept thinking about how much time it takes to heal, but how beautiful that process is, how it requires all the small things described in the poem to knit themselves together into a new sense of warmth and comfort. It is not about returning to normal, but reforging normal. It takes more time, but it's why I always loved driving Highway 1 down the coast. If you left my parents' home at 11 in the morning, you would hit Malibu just as the sun set beyond the Pacific. Happy Wednesday, Quilt Family.